All right, often in my weather forecasts on the news, one of the main things that we talk about, and if you've ever watched the news, you've definitely heard a weatherman say this, is talking about a high pressure or a low pressure. And I had somebody ask me yesterday, they're like, what, is, what does that actually even mean? So before we actually go into high and low pressure, I might make that my video tomorrow, we actually need to just understand the overall ideas of what air pressure is and what air density is. That'll lay the foundation and then we can dive into more of the weather concepts in the future. So just looking at air pressure and air density, going over to Meteorology Insider here. So have you ever wondered why a balloon deflates over time or why airplane wings are shaped the way they are? The answer lies in two fundamental properties of the atmosphere air pressure and air density. In this blog post, we'll explore what these two concepts are and why they're so important in understanding the behavior of our atmosphere. So yeah, looking at two different things here, air pressure and air density. As you'll find out, they're pretty closely related, but there are little intricacies that differentiate the two. So air pressure. First, let's talk about air pressure. Simply put, air pressure is the force exerted by the weight of the atmosphere on everything within it. You might not think of air as having weight, but it does. In fact, the weight of the entire atmosphere is about 5.5 quadrillion tons. So I never really like big numbers like that. I, I can't picture 5.5 quadrillion, what that means. The measurement that I like the most is, if you think of an inch by an inch, so like a cube, or an inch by an inch by an inch. And then that goes from sea level, so the surface, all the way up to the top of the, top of the atmosphere. If you were to weigh all of the little air molecules in that column, it would actually come out to about 14.7 pounds. So at all times, if you live by the coast, you have about 14 pounds of air molecules pushing against you. That force that's pushing against you is air pressure. So how does air pressure work? Ooh, I like it. They're going to use a little, little metaphor here. Think of it like a stack of books. The more books you add, the heavier the stack becomes, and the more pressure it exerts on the surface beneath it. Similarly, the more air you stack on top of a particular area, the greater the air pressure at that point. So yeah, I think that's a good way to think of it because it also helps you visualize where you have like higher pressure at the surface. The atmosphere is actually going to be like a little bit taller there than when you have lower pressure. And then what happens is you often have winds flowing from high to low. You can almost think of it as your two towers just trying to like even out. And as the wind, the air molecules flow from where there's the higher pressure to lower pressure, as it tries to even out, that flow of air molecules is what creates wind and the greater the difference between those two the faster the wind's going to be which makes i'd say intuitive sense best way i always think of this is if you have a tray and it's almost level on both sides and you pour a little water it might flow to like the other side relatively slowly but if there was a big difference in your elevation of your tray and then you poured water, it go very fast. So the bigger your air pressure difference is, the different heights of your atmosphere, the faster those air molecules are going to flow on to a decent rule of thumb. So air pressure is usually measured in units called pascals, although you may also see it measured in pounds per square inch or millibars. Usually millibars, I would say, is the most common one I see. At sea level, the average air pressure is about 1,013 millibars, or 14.7 PSI. However, air pressure decreases as you go higher in altitude. This is why climbers on Mount Everest have to carry oxygen tanks, because the air pressure and oxygen levels at that altitude are too low for humans to breathe comfortably. So I just talked about a few different things here. One is that air pressure goes down as you go up. And if you think about this for a second, it makes perfect intuitive sense. So if you're standing on the surface and the pressure you're feeling against your head is all the weight of the atmosphere above you, if you were to take yourself and put yourself 100 feet in the air, now some of those air molecules are below you and they're not exerting a force on you, I don't think. 
You're just feeling the air molecules above you pushing down, but now there's less of them. So as you go up, there's less air molecules above you, meaning the weight of the atmosphere above you is less, meaning your air pressure goes down. And then they also mention Everest here. Cool fact about Everest is if you're at the peak of Mount Everest, you're above 70% of all the air molecules in our atmosphere because they're very dense right down at the surface and then it, it decreases rapidly. And then as you go higher and higher up, there's just not as many air molecules. So I'm just gonna make up some numbers. Let's say in a breath, you need a thousand oxygen molecules and that's what I'm breathing in right now. If I was on Everest, maybe each breath would only have 30 oxygen molecules. So that's why you need the tanks in order to breathe. Those are made up numbers, but you get the general idea there. So air pressure is also affected by temperature. Warm air molecules move around more rapidly than cold air molecules. You can think of this like the air molecules are excited. And as they move around more, they bump into each other more, and then it's warmer. It's like if you had 100 people in like a small little studio apartment dance party, or if you had those same 100 people in a gymnasium. The denser they are and the more they're moving around, the hotter it's going to be. So more rapidly than cold air molecules, which means that warm air takes up more space and has a lower density than cold air. So it's a little counterintuitive there, but warm air kind of expands itself out and it's lower density. That's why if you think back to like cold air, think of it as the air like shrinking in on itself. So you could think of this as kind of the cold front, warm front video that I made, where when a cold front's coming in, the air is denser, so then the warm air lifts up above it. And that's where air density plays in, but we'll get to air density in a second. As a result, warm air exerts less pressure than cold air at the same altitude. This is why hot air rises, it's less dense, and exerts less pressure, so it's pushed upward by the denser, higher pressure air around it. So it doesn't seem like a very important concept, but that's one of the most important concepts to understand in meteorology because that's often what is the mechanism driving storm development. It's usually warm air that's less dense than cold air, rising up, producing clouds, rain, and big storms. So air density. Which brings us to the second fundamental property of the atmosphere, air density. As we just described, air density is related to air pressure and temperature. The denser the air, the more air molecules there are in a particular volume of space. And I don't think I really need to explain that. So thinking back to my like 100 people in a studio apartment versus 100 people in a gymnasium, it makes sense that in that studio apartment, you're going to have a greater density as it's mass divided by volume. So at sea level, the average air density is about 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed. This means that in a cubic meter of air, there are about 1.2 kilograms of air molecules. Okay, that's again, big numbers, can't really picture it. However, air density decreases as you go higher in the altitude because there are fewer air molecules in the same volume of space. The other way I think of this is what's holding those air molecules to Earth is gravity. And as you get closer to the Earth, your gravity is going to be stronger, so it's going to be able to hold more of those molecules. Whereas when you get farther away from Earth, you're decreasing your gravity, so it's not going to be able to hold on to as many. And then eventually you're so far away from Earth's gravity that your atmosphere stops. So air density, is important for a variety of reasons. For example, it's a key factor in determining how easily an object can move through the atmosphere. Objects with a higher density, like rocks or metal, will fall more quickly through the air than objects with a lower density, like feathers or balloons. Air density is also important in aviation. Airplanes are designed to be aerodynamic, that is, they're shaped in such a way as to minimize air resistance and maximize lift. You can think of like the wings of an airplane, if you've ever seen it, where the wind's going underneath it and over it. Don't have time to get into that in this video. And I don't know if I could explain it, if, even if I tried. So the density of the air affects how much lift an airplane can generate. Denser air means more lift, 
while less dense air means less lift. This is why airplanes have to fly faster and at a higher angle of attack in thinner air at high altitudes. That, I think that makes sense. Like if you are in a pool, those molecules are a lot denser than the air around you. So you could keep yourself suspended by just flapping your arms and treading water. Whereas if I do that in the air, I'm not going to start flying away because it's so less dense. I'm not pushing against enough particles to lift myself up. And same is true for airplanes. So conclusion. In conclusion, the air pressure and air density are two fundamental properties of the atmosphere that affect everything from the weather to the behavior of airplanes. Air pressure is the force exerted by the weight of the atmosphere on everything within it, while air density is related to the number of air molecules in a particular volume of space. Understanding these concepts is key to understanding the behavior of our atmosphere and to designing machines that can operate effectively within it. So I think my summary here is air pressure, just think of weight of the atmosphere above you pushing down on you, and then air density is how tightly packed those air molecules are going to be. And then less dense things will lift up above more dense things, and your air pressure decreases as you go higher in the atmosphere, and the same is true for your air density. So hopefully you learned something throughout the course of this video. I know I did, and I'll see you tomorrow.